On January the 30th, 1972, a civil rights march through the centre of Londonderry culminated in one of the darkest episodes of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. The events of Bloody Sunday would come to define the conflict for many and leave a lasting legacy of bitterness and injustice. So what happened on the day? By 3 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, as many as 15,000 people gathered in the Cregan area in protest against the government policy of internment, which allowed the authorities to imprison suspected IRA members without trial. Organised by the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, it was technically illegal, as all large gatherings had been prohibited by the Stormont administration. Ignoring the ban, the predominantly Roman Catholic crowd set off towards the Guildhall in the city centre. But their intended route along William Street was blocked off by British troops called in to police the event. The main march was redirected along Rossville Street towards the Free Derry Monument, but some stayed to confront the soldiers manning the blockade. As the standoff intensified, a water cannon was brought up to disperse the rioters. Bricks and bottles were soon answered with rubber bullets and CS gas. At seven minutes past four, soldiers from the 1st Battalion Parachute Regiment advanced to make arrests. Moments later, as the protesters fled back towards the bog side, shots rang out across the city. The army claims that they were fired on first by paramilitaries in the Rossville Flats, but this has long been contested by eyewitnesses. 21 British soldiers fired their weapons, discharging 108 live rounds between them. After less than 30 minutes of shooting, 13 marchers were dead and 14 badly wounded. One of those injured would die several months later. As retaliations began with the burning of the British Embassy in Dublin, the then Prime Minister Ted Heath ordered a public inquiry. The soldiers were largely exonerated by the widely criticised Widgery Tribunal, although the report admitted that their behaviour bordered on the reckless and that the victims were unarmed. Years of campaigning by nationalists and the victims' families followed, and a second inquiry was commissioned by Tony Blair in 1998. Twelve years and £200 million later, the Savile reports concluded that none of the casualties were posing a threat or doing anything that would justify their shooting. It led to a public apology by Prime Minister David Cameron in 2010. Indeed, on behalf of our country, I am deeply sorry. I'll get that little piece of danger for